Hello. So, in the past, when I've talked about Star Wars, I've talked about the fact that, in my personal belief, I believe there is such a thing as a toxic fandom. I don't believe that it's relocated to one specific franchise. I do believe that George Lucas has gotten a blunt of this toxic fandom throughout his career. One of the things that I've heard a whole lot with Disney's sequel trilogy was, oh, if George Lucas had done it, it would have been better. So many people have pointed that out. And I keep thinking, well, people didn't like it when he did the prequels. And there's another franchise that he was a part of that people tore down, which is baffling. And that's the franchise I want to talk about today. So today's ranking video, I'm going to rank all four of the Indiana Jones movies. This is the franchise I have grown up with. Growing up with this, I was a big fan because my father was a big fan. I've watched all the movies. I did not ever see the TV series Young Indiana Jones. I have played two of the games, the old arcade game. I played a little bit of that, and I used to play a computer game called Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis. Very good game. I loved games like this. Now that I'm an adult, I've come to see that there is indeed a toxic fandom, especially when it comes to George Lucas's movies for some reason. I mean, if it wasn't made back when the originals were made, people hate it. I mean, people are only accepting of the Star Wars prequels now because of Disney. And honestly, the Disney ones were not that bad. I actually enjoyed them because I didn't just buy into everything that people were saying. I did not go with the mob mentality. And that's what a lot of people I feel do. They go with the mob mentality. A majority of people have say something and these people just follow them for example me and my buddy were talking and he kept bringing up how the force awakens is just like a new hope i'm like really because i could point out several differences and he's like what's that i said okay well for starters yes there's a desert planet there's been a desert planet and Pretty much all of them. Yeah, we went back to Tatooine for the prequels. Next, there was a robot? Yes, but see, R2-D2 in the originals had much more crucial information to the plot. BB-8 carried nothing that was crucial to the plot. Luke Skywalker was not crucial to the plot of that story. The most important thing on that planet to... The resistance was Finn. It was only because of Finn that they were able to launch an attack on Starkiller Base. Because he said he could get the shield down because he knew where it was. And Han said, okay, well let's take the guy and go in there, save Rey, shut the shield down, and then get out of there. Okay, so yeah, they had to save a girl. Just like they had to go save Princess Leia. But Rey wasn't a princess. I mean, I guess you could kind of say she was since she's technically the Emperor's granddaughter. I say technically because I don't know if that applies with, you know, an Emperor. Exactly. But my basic point is, is there's a lot of similarities. Yes. But there's also a lot of differences. There's a lot of similarities through the others. But everyone just talks about all the bad stuff that they don't compare the similarities of the other movies. Now, don't get me wrong. I Again, I will say this as long as I live. The Last Jedi is not one of my favorites, but there are a lot of good moments. People just can't seem to get through the bad moments. And the same with today's franchise, Indiana Jones. When I get to a certain movie, I'll explain what 
but yeah I mean I'm pretty sure you already know going into this video what I'm about to talk about so if me defending a movie that I like is not something you want to hear thank you for watching as far as this for those of you who are willing to be open and willing to hear me out thank you for sticking around you are the people that I make my videos for and I hope you enjoy my ranking of the Indiana Jones franchise, which I love the entire thing. Just because a movie is lower on the list than another doesn't mean I didn't like it. There are only four of these movies, so it's really hard to just say which is the best. They're all pretty good in my opinion. There is one that I think is better above all of them. But let's move into it. Number four, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Now, the reason why is actually something pretty recent. For fans of the Big Bang Theory, spoiler warning, if you haven't watched Big Bang Theory and you don't want this shatter, please just skip ahead. But they're absolutely right in Big Bang Theory. Indiana Jones was pointless to the story. Everything that happened would have still happened regardless of whether Indy was there or not. And Big Bang Theory does a really great job of pointing out how pointless he was to the story. Do I still enjoy the movie? Of course I do. It's still an adventure. You still get to see Indy kick ass. It still has those corny moments. It still has those jokes. It still has that action. I still enjoy it. But... Because in the is pointless, it's kind of, you know... Eh. Also, originally, at least when I was growing up, it was just called Raiders of the Lost Ark. For a long time, I actually didn't even know it was part of the Indiana Jones franchise. Till my dad said, why aren't you watching the first one? I said, well, this Temple of Doom is the first one. He's like, no, Raiders is. I was like, oh. I was a real little kid. I didn't know. So, it, it, and our box just said Raiders of the Lost Ark. It didn't say Indiana Jones on it. So, moving on to number three, for me, is Temple of Doom. I really liked this one. I love the comedy. In fact, I, that's how I view the entire movie, is the comedy. Uh, growing up with the movie, I really related to Short Round. Some of my favorite scenes are from this movie. Like when he's on the bridge, which you see almost any time Indiana Jones is referenced, you know, with commercials and stuff. They'll show a clip of that scene of him on the bridge about to cut the bridge down. I love the little ritual ceremony. I like the water scene. I even don't mind that Willie complained all the time and screamed all the time. So, I really like all of it. I do think it's 100% ridiculous now that I've grown up and I can understand physics and everything that Indiana Jones was able to survive a plane crash by jumping out the plane with an inflatable raft. Yet, people tend to forget about that with the next movie. So moving on to number two, Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Now at first I just thought it was okay, but the more and more that people hated it, the more and more I liked it because it was like, how can you not like this? And there are two major complaints I hear about with this movie. Number one, the fridge scene. People often say the fridge scene is ridiculous. There's no way he could have survived a nuclear explosion in a fridge. Well, number one, the nuclear explosion was like probably a mile or two away from the town. They wanted to, when they were testing the bomb, they wanted to see how much of an area would be damaged by the bomb. And the radiation as far as I, I know, is not immediate. 
to the explosion because the thing that really does the most damage is all that air being pushed out of the way and that's not that air right there at the front is not the radioactive part the radioactive part has to come from the core and move outward not saying that it doesn't go with it but the first thing that's gonna hit the first thing that's gonna smack into that fridge is basically a ton of air next I happen to know from books I've read and things I've seen that fridges back in that time were basically like metal coffins the only reason Indy was able to get out of the fridge was because the latch was so badly damaged from the fall that it broke it apart the inside of the fridge was just big enough to fit a grown man he didn't have a lot of room to shake around so it was probably the safest thing he could have done and moving on to the last bit it also was lead lined they actually make a point to show you the little tag that says lead lined which is just like radioactive suits are lead lined so when people sit there and say oh there's no way any could have survived that what are you talking about I don't understand because it's lead lined it's very small so he has no room to move around he pulled everything out to get himself in and he was blown way out of the radioactive zone and even afterwards they show him being scrubbed down to make sure he's not radioactive so that was the first thing that people had a major problem with with that movie the second thing was the aliens well yes they're aliens but the crystal skull is the actual thing that archaeologists have actually found and in the movie they actually make a point to say they're not exactly aliens as usual the usual term alien applies they are interdimensional beings now there has been a lot of talk amongst conspiracy theorists and scientists and religious people that what if God was an alien that came to earth created life got things started and just wanted to see what happened this is a big point in the series of Stargate which I'm a huge fan of that series works among the same premise this was basically saying these are beings from another dimension another earth that came to our world just to study us but then got stuck here and now they want to go home or it wants to go home because it seemed like there was only one and it couldn't go home it couldn't be whole again until it had all its parts and that's what that temple was it was a portal making machine to open a portal back to its home and that's what it was trying to do I understood this because I am a huge science fiction fan I'm a huge fan of science fiction that has already tackled these very subjects maybe that's why I like this movie so much I don't know but moving on to the last one Shia LaBeouf I actually liked his character looking at him he does look like like he could really be the child of Marion in Indiana if you look at Last Crusade the young actor there that young actor looked like he could have been the child of Sean Connery and whoever Indy's mother was. So I had no problem with Shia LaBeouf. I liked the Transformer movies that he was in. I enjoyed several other movies that he had come out in. So I didn't see a problem. 
Number one, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. I love this movie. I have probably watched this almost as many times as I've watched Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. This was the first Indiana Jones I believe that I ever saw in theaters with my family. And I loved it. We got to see Indy Young. It had Sean Connery. The jokes between father and son were great. It was just a blast all the way through. And of the four movies, this is probably the most quotable movie. So this has been my review of the Indiana Jones franchise. If you would like to, you are more than welcome to put your ranking down below. If you have not yet, please subscribe to this channel. Make sure to click the notification bell. I am on Twitter, Facebook. I will also be uploading these videos to BitChute. I seem to get more views over on BitChute than I do on YouTube. But I am hoping that I get more subscribers on YouTube. Basically, it's whoever subscribes more. If eventually, bit shoot, I start getting more subscribers, I may switch over to doing bit shoot videos. But bit shoot only allows 20 minute videos, I think. I've had some problems uploading videos that are over 20 minutes. So, there's that. But I want to thank you all for watching, and I will talk to you next time.